Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're in the office of the president of Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Myrta Martin, who is the ninth president at Fort Hayes State University. And just a little note before we begin our first visit of the uh, new uh, beginnings with Dr. Martin. Kansas Board of Regents appointed Dr. Myrta Martin, the ninth president of Fort Hayes State, May 2nd, 2014, effective July 1. Dr. Martin holds a baccalaureate degree in psychology and political science from Duke University, master of business administration degree from the University of Richmond, and a doctorate with an emphasis in strategic management and leadership from Virginia Commonwealth University. She is fluent in three foreign languages. I like what you've done with the place, Dr. Martin. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very nice. Thank you uh, for taking the time to introduce us to you at Fort Hayes State University. The uh, first thing we need to uh, ask about is uh, the display on your desk here. Well, you know, this was um, something that was given to me. It's the um, Hayes Area Children's Center. And uh, I really appreciate it because, you know, children are the future of our nation. And so this uh, much I've been speaking about, and we were speaking earlier about new beginnings after following a living legend like Dr. Hammond for this university, for me moving halfway across country, it is a new beginnings. And these children are representative of new beginnings. So this is something that it's very special, and I'm very thankful that it was given to me. I want you to, if you would, just kind of tell us a little about yourself here in our initial uh, visit uh, today. What's your, uh, tell us about your childhood. Okay. Well, thank you for asking. I, you know, I, I've shared some with some of the family members here in Hayes, America already, as well as, as the community here at uh, Fort Hayes State. Um, I was born in Cuba. And uh, when the communist regime took over the nation, um, the way that families could leave the island after the frontiers were closed was to petition the government. And that was a, a wonderful strategy. When I used to teach strategic management, actually, I talked about the, the Cuban strategy because they understood the interrelationship between values, culture, and setting a plan. And so. They struck at the heart of the people, um, and they struck at family, and they struck at faith, which was the common values. So to make a long story short, my grandmother, my sister, and I, after the entire family, petitioned to leave the island. Only my grandmother, maternal grandmother, sister, and I were allowed to leave via Spain. My grandmother was a Spaniard, or as I said yesterday, she probably turned over in her grave and said, I wasn't a Spaniard, I was a Basque. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, because she was, we, we, the family is from the Basque region of Spain, and of course it's Basque nation, uh -huh. as you well know. Um, so we went back to, to her country, and I actually grew up in Madrid. Uh, her family, my family, had been, uh, throughout centuries, had built convents throughout Spain. And when they went to Cuba, to Havana, they started to build convents in the island and, and also in Havana. So the mother superior in Havana emailed, emailed, hardly, <laughs> wrote the mother superior in Madrid. And it was the nuns who came to pick us up at the airport. And they had built a small little apartment in the convent, thinking that my parents and the rest of the family would follow. They didn't. And so I grew up in a convent. And I went to school in a convent, and uh, we realized that my parents were not going to be able to leave. We'd exhausted every single mean. So we came to the States, and that was a shock. I was going, um, I spoke, you know, the three languages, but none of them were English. And I had uh, grown up in a convent, and I had gone to school in a convent. And so I'm thrown into a society that is co-ed, mm -hmm. not being able to speak the language. Um, but you know, it was a wonderful experience because it afforded me opportunities to come to a nation in, that, that really exemplified the pursuit of happiness. 
And I'm thankful so much for my grandmother, um, both grandmothers, my maternal and paternal grandmother, have made a tremendous and have had a, a, an insignificant influence in my life. Um, my maternal grandmother gave me freedom, mm -hmm. and I appreciate the value. Um, you know, for most American, we take that so much for granted. Mm -hmm. But for when somebody doesn't have it, it's something that I hold dear and near to my heart. My paternal grandmother um, strengthened my faith. Um, she, her faith moved mountains, and I learned an awful lot from them. So they, they gave me the values and, and build the character of the individual that I am. Um, somebody who, who values faith, um, who values family, um, where integrity and honor and justice and stewardship are not just words. We're passing it forward are not just words. You know, we're talking here today because somebody believed in me. Somebody took the time to say, this is how you apply to college. This is where you should apply to college. This is why this is the right fit for you. And she even wrote the check for me to go to college because we didn't have the money. And so that has become my mission. That's why I'm here. That's what gets me up in the morning. That's my passion is to pass it forward. It's to enable others um, access to the American dream. Um, I'm, I think I'm a very powerful visual representation of what can be achieved with sacrifice, with hard work, but also with help from others who believe in you. And I believe in our youth, and I will do everything in my power to ensure that they have the same access to the American dream as I had. Because you've literally been on that journey. I've lived it. I've lived it. Are either of your grandmothers still alive? No. Um, my, pater my maternal grandmother passed about 10 years ago. And my paternal grandmother passed, uh, I guess, a year and a half ago. She lived to be 101. And I was thankful. Uh, I became her caretaker. Um, and I was thankful because, you know, my children are now 21 and 25. And few individuals can say that they have grown up with a great, great grandmother mm -hmm. who has 200 years worth of memories. She remember the memories, the stories of her grandmother, of her grandparents, and then she lived 101 years. And, you know, she, she, the, the, the pictures that I have had the big hats with the plumes. <laughs> and you think, this is actually my grandmother, mm -hmm. you know, or my great-grandmother. And the stories, I don't need to tell you. It's, it's not hearsay. It's not... Well, I, your grandmother said that she walked five, five miles to school. <laughs> you know, she actually lived it and she could tell them. And so she too made a tremendous impact on the lives of my daughter Catherine and my son Patrick. So I'm very thankful for that. My maternal grandmother also got to meet them and um, she died, as I said, uh, 10 years ago. And, um, but I have, uh, my children have memories of her coming to her home and sitting down on the floor with them, you know, and, and teaching them how to knit or how to cook or just how to play dominoes with my son. And those are memories that they have and I have of those times. Well, Dr. Martin, I think you're going to uh, find that so many of the strong ties in the area come from grandparents, come yes. from family and the associations you're going to you're going to hear a lot of stories that are very similar to that with the influences of some of the grandparents oh the absolutely and you know that that's one of many reasons that um i came here um that's obviously going to be a yeah, question yeah. why fort hayes state well you know <laughs> when um it, it's it's um 
John and I had made the decision at the beginning of uh, last year that my children were old enough now that we had given them the roots. I had been approached several years uh, before to move on and we made the decision that uh, we wanted to give our children roots. It, it was important for me for them to have a connection uh, to a society, to, to a school, to a culture. You know, my, my son went to um, a faith-based school, St. Christopher's, and I call her, his friends, the Band of Brothers because they would just swarm into the house. <laughs> and of course, with the boys were the girls who swarm into the house. Mm -hmm. And I love that. But it was those values of, of, of stewardship, of friendship, of doing for others before self mm -hmm. that were important for me, that are important for me, and that were important for the school. And, and so we made the decision uh, because Catherine had already moved on to college, that we would allow, he's four years younger, mm -hmm. that we would allow him to have his roots. And But when he went on to college, we decided that, okay, and my in-laws, who's my husband's, John's parents, also passed away, um, we made the decision that, because we were looking after them as well, obviously, caretakers, we thought, okay, we, we're going to then be looking to see where God takes us. <clears throat> My grandmother always said, God speaks to you all the time. You just have to have your eyes open to see where he leads you and your ears open to hear his word. And so with that philosophy and with that faith and with that knowledge, we thought, where, where are we going to go? And, and so I got the phone call from the consultant saying, you've been nominated. Um, we'd like for you to apply. And I said, well, I don't just apply for apply. I need to find a place that I can call home. And so I did the due diligence and, and applied. And um, what attracted me or what impressed me, I think is probably a better word, is that the profile that I looked at said something that I had never read before. And it said that they were looking for a leader who wanted to work, who wanted to lead in a caring community and that had a strong work ethic and that describes who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I love what I do. I say to people, since I enter higher ed, I've never had a job because I wake up every morning <laughs> saying, thank you that I get to do what I love to do. You know, and I'm up at five o'clock in the morning and I go to bed at one o'clock at night and at two o'clock at night and that's not being a workaholic because I get energy from meeting students, from meeting people, from meeting family members which is what the family of Fort Hay State University and Hayes American and our alumni mm -hmm. are about. We're family, yeah. you know? And so that's what attracted me here. And I tell you, I've been here three weeks full time. I was, came in three weeks separate times before my first day. Mm -hmm. And I have encountered just that, a family. Uh, I share with you earlier, we had um, um, the moving van arrived yesterday, and I was so thrilled, not for the furniture, because, but rather, I actually have clothes now. I'm not leaving out of a suitcase. Um, but um, the, the moving company was a transport, and they had crated some of the furniture, and they wouldn't uncrate the furniture. And I have these wonderful gentlemen from our grounds and facilities group that have been looking after me at the house. They've been remodeling the house and they were there and they dropped what they were doing to help. You know, and it was, one was checking that off and the, you know, two were prying the, the, the crates open. Where else do you get that? And it wasn't because I was the president because they called me Mirta. Because if we're family, mm -hmm. you know, it was because they've adopted me and this university has adopted me, whether it's Karen, whether it's the faculty, whether it's the staff. You know, I feel I've been here three, day, three weeks and I feel like I've been here 30 years. And that's good. And, that is and that's good. good. That is good. Finally, if you would, uh, before our next visit, um, you're going to be addressing faculty and staff. Yes, sir. Um, kind of setting the tone for the new school year. Uh, what are you going to tell them? 
I'm going to tell them that the best is yet to be, that these are new beginnings for us as a family. I'm going to tell them that we have been and are world ready and forward thinking. And so we are now positioned to be the destination of choice because we have distinctive programs. We have world-class faculty and we have world-class staff. And so people will come and we will instill in them a passion to pass it forward and a passion so that our graduates, when they graduate and go out into the world, not only will they carry my name, this wonderful university's name, the faculties and the staff names, but they will carry on knowledge that will improve the human condition. Jeff, I think this is going to be an extremely pleasurable time <laughs> in our visits on a regular basis, we hope. Yes, with Dr. You. Mirta Martin, ninth president of Fort Hayes State University. Thank you. Sir. Our community connection. Thanks for watching. Thank you.